the service, that's allowed. But uh, there are many of us gathered here in our building, and that's great. And many more of you uh, joining with us online. We thank the Lord for that. We are one fellowship still, even if we can't all be together within the same four walls. But our hearts are joined in Jesus Christ. Now the rain is coming down, but this day we are celebrating the harvest. And the rain is a necessary part of God providing for us, so we thank Him for that. We're going to remember that our God has been good and faithful to us, even through this crisis. He has put food on the table, and in His generosity He has provided plenty for all people. If only, if only we will be as generous in sharing it as He has been generous in giving it. So today we're going to focus on that. Listen to these words from Psalm 65. Praise awaits you, our God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. For you care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. Praise be to God, may we shout for joy today, even if with masks on, we're somewhat restricted in doing that, but our vocal cords, let us do it with our hearts. Kathy is going to come and lead us in a prayer of celebration of our great God. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God and Maker. We worship you, Father God, Maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. We adore you, faithful God, who remains faithful forever, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You reign forever, Lord, above all principalities and powers and rulers of this dark age. You alone are sovereign, and we praise you as Lord over our lives. We exalt you, Lord, who is mighty in power and whose understanding has no limits. In the midst of a sifting world, we acknowledge that you alone are God. You are all-knowing, the Alpha and Omega. You made all things, and without you, nothing exists. We exalt you, Lord, who continually delivers us from the pit of death, who binds up our wounds and heals our broken hearts, we worship you, our Father, who has redeemed us and called us your children, heirs and joint heirs in your kingdom. We praise you who is preparing a place for us in eternity and makes the riches, the desires and wants of this earthly existence meaningless without you. We extol you, our Heavenly Father, who upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. We worship you who protects us from the hand of the devourer. We exalt you, our Heavenly Father, for being our shepherd who leads us by still waters and gives us boldness for when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
We worship you who has our names in the book of life, who wipes our every tear, holds us in the palm of your hand, and turns our mourning into dancing. Lord, who is there like you, who has created us and has got the number of our days? You know the hairs on our head. You will never leave us or forsake us. As your people this morning, we recognize you and worship you, God who is full of love and satisfies all who trust in you. Reading from Psalm 145, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works and I'll proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, O oh Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. 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 Well, in the year that has gone by since our last harvest, I think we all are aware that our life has been turned upside down uh, by events beyond our control with what has happened through COVID. Uh, it has affected each and every one of us in different ways. We know that we are living in days where many people are nervous, many people are finding life hard. Not only has COVID threatened health, it has threatened wealth and prosperity. And on this harvest service, our needs are to be provided from uh, at a time like this. There are people who have struggled with financial difficulties. There are people who have been furloughed. There are people who have lost their jobs completely. There are others who cannot find a first job. Some wonder what will happen to their pensions. If we have children or grandchildren, we wonder, will they be paying for all of this for years to come? But in these troubled times, brothers and sisters, we have a great opportunity to shine as a light for the Lord Jesus Christ because we know the God who rules all things. And we have seen his face in Jesus Christ. We have seen his fatherly love and care for us. We know the one to whom we can turn. 
We don't know the answer to every question. Most certainly not. But we do know the God who holds all things in his hand. And if we know where help is to be found, what an opportunity to point our neighbours there. But how do we do that? That, for many of us, is the question, isn't it? We would love to be able to share something with our neighbours, but we just don't know how. I want to take you back to that old and wonderful prayer that Jesus gave to us, and to one line from it in particular, give us today our daily bread. And to suggest to you that in this prayer we have a simple way of sharing our faith with our neighbours. We could introduce many of them to this prayer for the very first time. Older ones amongst us, I think, tend to assume that everybody knows the Lord's Prayer because we were taught it as children, we were taught it at school. That is not the case these days. There are many people for whom this prayer would be, be a surprise, it would be new. And one thing we can do is write it out for our neighbours and give it to them. If you're going to do that, I would suggest that you do it in more modern English, not because I despise the old familiar form of the Lord's Prayer that many of us are used to, but simply because we want to communicate the Word of God as clearly and as simply as we can to people. But one thing that we could do for our neighbours if we're talking to them is say, you know the God who made everything came into this world, he came and lived in a land where hunger often stalked, a land where illness and serious disease threatened. He didn't make himself immune to these things. He came and lived amongst them. And he taught us to pray and to ask that our needs might be met. He gave us a very simple prayer. I say it every day. Do you know this prayer? If not, I'll write it out for you. That would be a great and simple way to share something really worthwhile with our neighbours at this time. And in particular, I would suggest, on the line in red, this line that is so relevant to our daily needs, give us today our daily bread. See, one thing we have to be aware of is turning the gospel into some kind of distant fantasy, something that relates to a world out there that's got nothing to do with the world down here. No, the good news of Jesus Christ is of a God who made this world, loves this world, loves the people in this world, provides for us, has his ear open to our prayers and seeks a relationship with us. And we need to therefore connect heaven and earth. And the Lord's Prayer does that beautifully. First it focuses our eyes on God, his greatness and glory. And then when we've seen how big he is, then we know that he can meet our daily needs and we bring them into his presence. And we need to keep those two things together, heaven and earth, God and our daily needs. Often I stand at the front of this building, I have the privilege of conducting weddings, and when the couple have made their vows, I get them to join their right hands, I lift their hands up and I say, what God has joined, let no one separate. Well, you know why we panic as much as we do in life? It's because what God has joined, heaven and earth, we separate. And things happen in our lives and we act as though we're orphans with no heavenly father to look after us. We say to ourselves, oh no, what am I going to do? Instead of saying, I wonder what my heavenly father is going to do in this situation. Let's not separate what God has joined. And in this prayer that Jesus gives us, teaching us to say to our Father, give us today our daily bread, heaven and earth are joined again. Now, because we so often forget God and leave him out, we need to acknowledge that honestly before him and seek his help. And Alan is going to lead us in a prayer of confession, which we have a chance to repent of that tendency to try and do life on our own without God. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning and confess our need of you. But we also confess that many times, many times in our daily lives, and in our, act our actions don't 
map to our need of you. Forgive us, Father, when we ignore you. We confess, Father, that many times during the past week, I confess I have not, I have not given you a second thought. Forgive me, Father. Forgive us, we pray. We confess that we've not lifted to you the situations that we find ourselves in in our daily lives. We confess we've tried to fix things ourselves. We try and use our own strength and our own wisdom to fix situations, Father. Forgive us. We need to confess that we need to come to you in prayer. Father, we confess that we gladly receive your abundant blessings that you pour out on us every day. Yet we confess we don't come to you and lift our praises and our prayers of thanksgiving. We confess, Father, that at times our actions have brought dishonor to your name. We confess at times when our words and actions deny you, Father. Help us, we pray, never to be ashamed of you and your gospel. And we confess we have not seen you as the giver of all things, as the Lord of the harvest. Forgive us, we pray. And so we confess all these things to you, Father, knowing that you are a loving and forgiving God. We confess our need of you in our lives. We confess our desire to know you more and have more of you in our lives. And finally, we confess that we need your help, Holy Spirit, to be the men and women and children of God that you've called us to be. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Jesus gives us a prayer that joins heaven and earth and brings our daily needs before God. But what then about our need to put food on the table and a roof over our head during this COVID time? Well, Jesus tells us simply to ask God to provide for us what we need for life. Give us today our daily bread. That's how to live. In this prayer, there's wisdom for life, there's wisdom that we can share with our neighbours. Here's how we can be beacons of hope. I want us to think just of three simple things that Jesus teaches us through this prayer. And the first is our dependency. Our dependency on God. Give, says Jesus. We come to God cap in hand. I know that many of us pride ourselves on our independence, but really we fool ourselves. In the end, we depend on God for everything. We would have nothing, we would be nothing, but for him. And so we come and say, please give us. Now, none of that, of course, is to despise or to deny the hard work of people like Farmer John, who, who produce the food for us. It's not to deny the hard work of those who drive the lorries or run the transport networks or stock the shelves or sit patiently at the checkout counting coupons in Sainsbury's. We praise the Lord for each and every one of them. But behind it all, this prayer reminds us that God is the one to whom we are indebted even for our ability to work with our hands, to be able to have money to spend, to have a system that works. Behind the whole human process lies God's gracious hand. Now it can feel a bit funny to us in a modern world to pray sometimes for daily bread when we know that there's enough bread in the freezer to last us for a fortnight. But it's only the grace of God that enables us to walk to the freezer, to open the door of the freezer, but the freezer is still working and has preserved the bread. It's only the grace of God that makes the bread nourish our bodies when we eat it. We depend on God for everything. So this prayer that Jesus gives us, give, beginning with that simple word give, it's, it's teaching us a whole way of looking at life. It's an acknowledgement that, that this works through every area of life. We, we, we haven't got what it takes in ourselves to make life work, but we know the one who has. Well, we're living in great days to relearn this basic lesson. None of us welcomes an economic downturn, of course we don't, but it can teach us humility 
And it can teach us what is true all the time, that we depend on God for everything. And remember, we can depend on Him, because He's a generous God. You have a generous Father in heaven. That's why Jesus says, give, give us today the bread we need. Give, not sell. That's striking, isn't it? Most times you would have to go and say sell in this world. But we come to God, it's not sell, it's give. It's give, because we've got a generous Father. That's an encouraging word for you. Take note of it. Remember, we depend on God every day. And He is generous, and we can rest in that. We're going to give thanks to God. Helen is going to lead us as we say together a thank you to this generous Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus who lived and died and rose again so that we could be forgiven and come before you clothed in his righteousness. We thank you that because of your great love for us, you did this while we were still sinners. We thank you for your generosity towards us. We thank you that you give us all that we need each day and much more besides. We thank you that you give us every good gift. And today we particularly thank you for the harvest. We thank you for the harvest from our gardens and allotments, for the abundance of tomatoes, beans, potatoes, courgettes, apples, plums, rhubarb, peppers, raspberries, strawberries, and so much more. We thank you for the harvest from the hedgerows, for the harvest from the farmers, for the food in the shops. Thank you for the sunshine and the rain that enable the crops to grow. Finally, Father, we thank you once again for Jesus, without whom we would still be lost and in darkness. We thank you that his complete and finished work on the cross means that our sins are forgiven and we can look forward to eternal life with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You give us all we need. And Jesus reminds us in this prayer of our dependency. But his words also remind us that we are a community, a family. Give us our, not give me my, which is the way that so often we're tempted to pray, but our Lord Jesus teaches us otherwise. Give us our. This is a prayer that teaches us from the outset that selfishness is not an option for a Christian. The world pursues its philosophy of look after number one with its poisonous results as that divides and destroys people, leads in consuming each other and then themselves. And many people, not just Christians, can see that that is the, the end product of that way of thinking. But they don't know what to do about it or how to get out of this. And once again, the key is found in this old prayer that our Lord gives us. Give us our daily bread. By teaching us to say day after day, give us our, Jesus is patiently schooling us in community, in being a family, with a responsibility to think of one another, not just ourselves. It's striking that in the Lord's Prayer, all the things we ask for, we ask for in the plural. It's always more than just little me. We pray with a mindset of a family. That's the normal Christian life. Now that applies, first of all, to the church. Our Heavenly Father loves to gather all his children around him and to see our love for one another as we pray for each other. We're not meant to be spoiled children who are just saying, it's all about me, 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 me. And that's horrible when we see that, isn't it? Our Father thinks so too. No, we are to be people who lift up one another in our prayers. As I was sharing this thought on Wednesday afternoon with a congregation gathered here, the Lord brought to my mind something that helps me such a lot as a young pastor and has been a real blessing to me over the years as a pastor. And I've passed it on to many another young pastor to encourage them and to try to help shape their ministry. It's something that goes back to a First World War chaplain 
who had the wonderful name Jeffrey Arkell Studdett Kennedy, but was known to the men in the front line as Woodbine Willie, because he would go out into the trenches with his haversack full of little packets of woodbines. He spent all his own money on, on this, and he would give these out to the men. They called him Woodbine Willie. And uh, he was a, a very great, very considerable First World War chaplain. There was very much more to him than just cigarettes. Uh, but on one occasion, uh, he was interviewing uh, somebody else who had just come out from the UK to France, to the Western Front, wanting to be a chaplain, uh, a fellow called Theodore Bailey Hardy, who had come as a much older man from his lovely parish setting, to the horrors of the Western Front, and he wanted to be a chaplain. And, and, and Woodbine Willie, Stoddard Kennedy, he, he, he was giving this man some advice, he was pouring his heart out to him, because he loved the troops and what you could do for the troops. And he said to the older man, you can pray with the men sometimes, but you can pray for them all the time. And that has stuck with me through the years. I think that's a great thing for every pastor. You can pray with your flock sometime, but you can pray for them and should pray for them all the time. Theodore Bailey Hardy, the older man, he took that very much to heart. And incidentally, and I'll give you this as a free little footnote, he went on to become the oldest man who has ever been awarded the Victoria Cross. He was a courageous chaplain. If you got that in the pub quiz, who was the oldest person ever to be awarded the Victoria Cross from that day to this? It was a Christian chaplain, Theodore Bailey Hardy. Uh, but that point that we can pray for one another, even when we can't pray with one another, that's a precious truth. Especially in this COVID time, where it's lovely that some of us are here, but many of us can't be in the building. But even if we can't pray with one another, we can pray for one another. And Jesus schools us in that every time he teaches us to say, give us our. And if we remember one another on our knees, we are much more likely to remember one another when we are on our feet and have the chance to do something practically. But we belong to the wider human community too. And when we pray, give us our, there is no reason why we should not think of our neighbours, whether they are Christians or not. And the whole worldwide community, for God sends his reign on the righteous and the unrighteous and loves people everywhere. It is an offence, brothers and sisters, that there are people starving in a world where God has provided plenty. It is an offence that people die from drinking polluted water when God has given us the means to do something about it. Martin Luther saw long ago that this prayer has a social dimension because if everybody is going to get daily bread, if everybody is going to have their needs met, there needs to be a thriving economy, there needs to be a just society, there needs to be employment, and there needs to be a planet that's still habitable because we haven't trashed the environment. Luther saw that long ago and it's still true. So to pray for our daily bread is not to pray a selfish prayer, it is to pray a for others prayer. Because we seek a generous God's blessing on the widest number of people. So we're going to pray for the needs of the world now. Our brother Rob is going to lead us in prayer. Lord, at a time you know um, 
what is going on in this world and that many, many people um, are living in a time of much fear and anxiety. And Father, we acknowledge that this is not only in the world around us, but it comes into our fellowship, into our church family. And we know there are those amongst us that are perhaps fearful of health or fearful of their financial position. And whilst all of those things are going on because of COVID, there is the normal stresses and strains of life and people we know, Father, are experiencing really, really tough and difficult days. But we just thank you that there's so many places we can go to in your world that give us encouragement at times like this. Father, remember the Apostle Paul as he prayed that that thorn in his flesh, whatever that was, would be removed. And you said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Father, we thank you that your grace is sufficient. Whatever we face this morning, those of us who are gathered here and online as well, um, and maybe just really feeling life's a struggle, Father, thank you that your grace is sufficient for us. Thank you that you said that you'll be with us in trouble. That it doesn't necessarily get removed straight away. But that you stay with us through the waters and through the fire. That you are there with us. And you will ensure that your people are not swept away by the flood. That you hold them in your hand. So Father, we ask for those who are struggling this morning. Whatever it might be that you would give them that great assurance that you are with them, that you are holding their hand, that you are leading them through the fire and will bring them safely through in your time of prayer. So we commit our family to you and pray for your blessing upon them. And Father, further afield, we want to pray for um, our leaders, uh, Father, that need so much of your grace and yet in many cases don't acknowledge their need. And people look to politicians, people look to leaders in science or health to provide all the answers, and they can't, and that's clearly obvious to us. Father, we just pray that you would give much wisdom to our leaders in whatever role they perform, and that you'd give them, Father, in these days, the desire to turn their faces to you. We pray for those who are Christians, we thank you for them amongst our leaders, and we pray that they would give wise counsel and be able to point others to you, because you do have all the answers, and you know that you're working out your purposes in our lives. So we pray for our leaders, we lift them up to you and pray for them. We pray for world leaders too, uh, for those like Donald Trump who are suffering from the virus themselves, we pray that those Christians around him might be able to speak into his life at this time that the, uh, the arrogance sometimes that we see of thinking he's got the answers to the world's problems, that he hasn't, that this, this can take away um, everything in a moment. And if we don't have you, we have nothing. Father, we just pray for them, we pray for healing, we pray most of all for healing of souls. And we pray at this time Father, that you'd work out your purposes. We don't know why this uh, coronavirus has come upon the world, but you do. And we just know that one of your objectives always is that men and women might be saved. That people would turn to you and would find you as their saviour. We pray that would happen. That as people listen online or in other ways, that they would hear your voice. They would hear the gospel and you would save souls at this time. And lastly, Lord, we just pray for those who are taking your word out to other parts of the world. We pray for Steve and Ruth as they uh, start to make preparations for finishing their tour of duty there and look for what it is next you have in play, in plan for them. And we just ask, Lord, you guide them and lead them and show them your will for them. Make them a blessing and bless them. And uh, we praise too for the littles on the mercy ships and for your blessing on them as they do that great work. As Eddie's just referred to, that those people who are suffering around the world from all kinds of things, but particularly health problems, and uh, we just pray for the work there. You bless it, increase it, bring many into contact with them, 
and that they would be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those who need to hear it. And we know there are many other missionaries and others in other parts of the world, of course, who are faithfully taking your word. We just pray, watch over and protect them and give them great success that many would come to know you, to trust you, and to know your, uh, your blessing in their lives. And Father, we conclude just with that uh, uh, line of a verse that's above um, our heads at the moment. Praise God for a good, all blessings, right? Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, you heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 So we can pray together and pray for one another as well. Did you know we have an opportunity to do that here in this building tonight or online if you can't join us in this building? But for the first time in a long time, we're going to have a Sunday evening prayer meeting here at 6 o'clock. I can hardly wait. If we have been deprived of that opportunity to be together to pray. I'm looking forward to that so much. If it pleases God to spare my life to this evening, I mean to be here praying. And I hope that as many of us as can safely fit in will do that, or if not, join us online at 6 o'clock. But I don't want to miss these opportunities. Maybe COVID can, can teach us something of the preciousness of it. If you've never thought of coming out to something like a prayer meeting, think of it like this. A day will come, my brothers and sisters, almost certainly, when you will find that the prayer meeting is going on and you are not able to be there because of age or infirmity or ill health and you will wish that you had that opportunity. I know that's how it will be for me when the day comes when I can't get out, I'll wish I could. And it will be the same for you. So while we can, I mean to be there praying. I hope you'll join us too. Jesus teaches us our dependency on God and our community as a family. Father, give us because we need from you. Give to us what we need because we are a family. Note one last thing that Jesus shows us here in this prayer. He teaches us a lesson about sufficiency. Give us our daily bread. It's immediate needs Jesus has in mind. Daily, because people in his world live from day to day. Now, I know that many of us, if we are either in employment or if we're on a pension, maybe we receive money, not daily, but weekly or monthly. In which case, we need to do some budgeting for a daily basis. And that's all right. Joseph had to do the same thing in the Old Testament when God provided him with several years' worth of grain, and then he had to farm it out little by little uh, through the following years when he knew that there wasn't going to be so much. We need to budget, we do. But you see the point Jesus is making. There's a danger that we, we dream of having so much bread in one go that we've got enough to last us a lifetime and we forget about God. And Jesus won't allow us to think that way. There's a further danger that wanting more and more means materialism will capture our hearts. And it's not that material things are bad. Jesus never says that. These are the gifts from God. But there is a deceitfulness to wealth that Jesus warns us about. Beware of the deceitfulness of wealth, says Jesus. How is it a deceiver? It deceives us by promising us a happiness and a security that it cannot deliver. So beware of that, says Jesus. Remember that your happiness and your security are found in God, not in things. So Jesus won't allow us to pray for too much. He tells us to ask God to meet our needs as they come along, not too far in advance, so that we forget about him, but enough to free us from despair, so that we are thankful to our God. Enough to sustain us, not enough to show off. Today, says Jesus, our daily bread. And bread, notice, not caviar. It's a, a, an illustration, of course, but it's, it's, it's a pointed illustration. Jesus has chosen 
The staple item of food from his day. Without bread you died. Give us what we need for life, Father. Jesus focuses our praying on the things that really matter. The necessities rather than the luxuries. So that God sustains us in his service. But doesn't spoil us. That's another lesson our materialistic society needs to learn for its own survival before we destroy ourselves in our greed. Jesus teaches us, give us this day our daily bread. God wants to rescue us, not ruin us. That's what Jesus is saying. Well, that's the prayer Jesus teaches us. And in a few moments we're going to say that prayer together to close our service but before we do, it's fitting that we remember that our Lord Jesus came not just to teach us, but to save us. And maybe it's because bread in Jesus' day meant the difference between life and death. But he chose bread as a symbol of who he was and what he came to do. I am the bread of life, said Jesus. And as he prepared to go to the cross, to meet our deepest need, reconciliation with God, he gave us bread and wine and said, this bread is my body, which is for you a symbol of what we need for life. We are going to remember Jesus now with bread and wine. If you've brought some with you, or if you've got some ready at home, or if not, run quickly to the freezer and go uh, to the kitchen and get something uh, there that you need. If anybody is here and you haven't got bread and, and wine with you, I'm sorry that we can't, under COVID regulations, pass this around. But please don't feel excluded in any way. You're just as welcome. You might say, well, this is a very imperfect way of, of celebrating the Lord's Supper, remembering Jesus in communion. Yes, it is. But it's always an imperfect way. We never do a perfect communion service any more than we ever do a perfect anything else. We are people who come to our Father who is gracious to us. And whether we are able to remember Jesus with bread, with wine, or simply in our hearts as we worship Him, which is the more important thing, we do what we can at this moment to remember our Lord Jesus you know, our confidence in the end for harvest, for daily bread, that we have a Father who will hear and answer our prayers, it's all based on, as Paul puts it in Romans chapter 8, the fact that he who did not spare his son but gave him up for us all, he will along with him, of course, graciously give us all things. Our Father who has met our greatest need in Jesus will certainly meet our lesser needs in our daily bread. So as we thank God today for the harvest, we put a firm foundation under all our thanks, our prayers, our praises, every thought that, that we have, every desire, we put a firm foundation under it by remembering that Jesus died for us. We have a God who loves us enough to die for us. So we're going to remember how our Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with his disciples, as he is present with us now by his Spirit, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. With grateful hearts, let us eat together and worship our Lord Jesus. In a cup of wine, Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us drink and worship the Lord Jesus.
Whenever you do this, said Jesus, you are proclaiming my death until I return. We praise God for every great truth that does not change in this COVID world where so much has changed. We praise God because Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Glory be to you, O Christ. Well, in all the perplexity of our present troubles, it is this simple prayer that Jesus gives to us and seals to us through his own death that points us to the way ahead. Here is the way of wisdom. Give us this day our daily bread. It's such a simple prayer, isn't it? We could share that with anyone. There is strength for every child of God in these few words, and there is light for the nations of the world. Here's the way not only to pray, but to live with dependency, community, sufficiency, and with confidence in God. They're the things that ought to be obvious to us, really, don't you think? And yet so often, instead of dependency, we sing, I did it my way. Instead of community, we shout, look after number one. Instead of sufficiency, we demand more and more, whatever the cost to the rest of the world. And if God did not humble us from time to time, if he did not restrain us, we would ruin ourselves. COVID is forcing us to see these truths, at least for a little while. If God in his mercy delivers us from COVID in due time, will we soon forget? Well, we'll be more likely to remember the things that matter if we will pray this simple prayer that Jesus taught us. And pray it regularly. Give us today our daily bread. Let's close our time of worship by praying this prayer together. Now, I'm going to suggest we say the Lord's Prayer in whatever form we know it. If God can sort out whether we've said it in an older language or a, a more modern language, depending what we're familiar with, I'm going to lead us in a slightly modernized version. But you say what you know. Now, if we're gathered together in the building, I'm not quite sure that the rules allow us to say very much, very loudly. So you might want to either just lip sync or mumble this prayer. God will hear mumbling on this occasion. Not when COVID is over, then we will speak distinctly. But mumbling is allowed. But if you're at home, you join in with this. But the important thing is that not simply we are saying words, but that we are praying, praying to our Father. So in that spirit of prayer, we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now next week when we gather, we're going to begin a series of studies in the book of Daniel. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, this week, if you can, read through the book of Daniel. It's only 12 short chapters. You could easily do that. You could sit down this afternoon and do that if you were so minded. But read through the book of Daniel, and next week we'll get into chapter 1. An amazing book full of the grace and the goodness of our God. But for now, let our annual harvest remind us that our Heavenly Father is a loving Father to us. He knows what we need. He's promised to provide. And so let's live in the freedom of that. And in these anxious times, let's be a light in our community. That's it. God bless you.
Bye for now.